So this video will be the second part to my who Manchester United should sign for Ten Hag video which will be linked in the description below. In that video I analysed the right back, centre back and goalkeeper that I would sign as well as the players I would look to sell. As I said in that video there will be three more positions I will be looking to fill and in this video I'll be discussing the defensive midfielder solely and in future videos that will be out shortly I will be looking to discuss the advanced central midfielder and the right winger. Hopefully those videos will be out in the next week or so. Also if you do like the look of these phone cases I'll leave the link in the description below anything you buy will help support the channel my personal favorite is the Ronaldo Sue celebration one even though I do also like the Fergie one as well but be sure to go over to the site linked in the description they've got a lot of other designs as well and if you use code AF at checkout you should get 25% off as well so the defensive midfielder will play the role of a Regista at the base of a three-man midfield in Ten Hag's 4-3-3 system. The player in this role needs to be pressure resistant in order to receive the ball under pressure with his back to goal in the build-up phase and being able to turn and swivel out of pressure or play quick first-time passes to move the ball around pressing players, whilst also having the passing ability to play incisive and long passes to progress the ball forward into the middle and final third. Also from a defensive point of view, the player needs excellent reading of the the game to position himself behind the midfield line to make interceptions whilst also having the in-game intelligence to know when to push up to man-to-man -to -man press and when to hold his position and cut off passing lanes. Tackling ability is also essential with this player being United's main ball winner in central midfield, sitting behind the play and looking to break up opposition attacks. Examples of players performing this role are Sergio Busquets who has been phenomenal at playing at the base of Barcelona's midfield for the past decade and a half or so. Rodri at Manchester City is probably the best modern day example of a Regista, being a fantastic forward passer, great under pressure and also having the tackling and reading of the game to perform the defensive side of that role and Fabinho who is a bit more industrious and less creative than the previous two but still performs both offensive and defensive sides of the role pretty well. At the moment United don't have this type of midfielder in their squad but 21 year old James Garner who is currently out on loan at Nottingham Forest would fit this role perfectly. On the ball Garner is very good under pressure being able to swivel away from players and retain possession in deeper areas whilst also having fantastic fantastic long passing ability which enables him to switch play directly from these deeper positions but he also possesses the reading of the game and tackling ability to play in that deep midfield position and so I think he could be like a new signing for Ten Hag coming into that role and being a better fit for it than Matic, Fred or McTominay. However I don't think that United can go into next season solely relying on Garner alone and so I have a few options for this position. I'll rank each player after I go through them all. The first option is Maxan Kakare who is Leon's 22 year old diminutive midfielder whose contract expires in the summer of 2023 and so would likely only cost United around £20 million. Kakare is one of my favourite young players at the minute, reminding me a lot of Marco Verratti, being extremely press resistant, able to swivel and then drive out of pressure, whilst also having the passing ability to work the ball into players between the lines or out to the flanks. He's also very good out of possession, being a very good pressing central midfielder, pushing up from the midfield line to put in standing tackles, was also being an excellent reader of the game as well from that midfield position and we can see this when we look at his FB ref report as over the past 365 days when compared against every other midfielder in Europe's top five leagues we can see how good he is as he ranks in the 96th and 94th percentile for pressures and tackles respectively whilst also sitting in the 79th percentile for interceptions which is absolutely insane he also ranks in the 94th for dribbles the 84th for progressive passes and the 67th for progressive carries showing that Kakare is excellent at moving the ball forward which is exactly what you want from a Regista in possession. Kakare is definitely one of the leading contenders for Manchester United in this position but we'll see if he makes a cut once I've analysed the other options. Edson Alvarez is an obvious choice as he's played under Ten Hag for the past few seasons in this exact role and so would understand the tactical side perfectly and at 24 years old, 25 in October, he's still at an age where he can improve significantly. Alvarez is far more of an industrious ball winner than than Kakare, and whilst he is a superior physical player in terms of his strength and height and general athleticism, he does lack Kakare's technical ability and press resistance. Alvarez is still pretty good on the ball, keeps things simple and circulates the ball quite well and he has the ability to play longer passes when needed. However, it's out of possession where he thrives, being able to race across the pitch and put in well-timed strong sliding or standing tackles, breaking up opposition attacks in a way that Fred, McTominay and Matic all don't seem to be able to do, with none of them having the physicality, athleticism and tackling ability that Alvarez possesses in combination. 
However, the reason I would rule Alvarez out is just because I think that there are better options on the market, and more specifically, players who are better in possession. Whilst Alvarez is still very good, I think United can get a player who's a level above, a creator in possession, being more of a playmaker than what Alvarez is. This is why I also wouldn't go for players like Declan Rice or Wilfred and Didi, who I do think are both very good players, mostly without the ball, and would probably do a very good job for United in alternative systems if they were significantly cheaper as well, with Rice's price tag also a major sticking point for me but I think there are players who possess better passing ability and would provide United with a lot more in possession. Calvin Phillips is a player who I think naturally would suit this role but I don't think he's at the level that United need which I fully broke down in a video looking at whether Manchester United should or shouldn't sign certain players. That video like a few others will be linked in the description below but two other players I think could be hit or miss or at least gambles to some extent are Ismail Benassir and Kadio Kone. Now I'll come on to why I say this in just a bit, but let's first analyse both players. So Benassir is a bulldog of a midfielder, around 5 foot 9 in height, but stocky and very industrious, able to stalk the player with the ball like an animal stalking its prey, waiting for the right time to launch in with an aggressive sliding or standing tackle. His FBRF report shows how good he is defensively as he ranks between the 86th and 90th percentile for pressures, tackles and interceptions, making him the perfect player not just for sitting deep and breaking up attacks, but also when asked to push up and apply pressure. But in possession he's also very good, his low centre of gravity and close ball control enable him to swivel out of pressure and he's a very good progressor of the ball as well and he can do this by driving the ball forward with the ball at his feet or finding incisive passes into players between the lines or switching the play with long passes out to players on the flanks. And we can see that he excels in this area just as much as he does defensively as he ranks in the 87th percentile for progressive carries, the 91st for progressive passes and the 97th for dribbles completed. Benassir does have a release clause of around £42 million in his current Milan contract which runs until 2024, which at the age of 24 is a fair price I would say, although it does seem like he may sign a contract extension in the coming weeks, which would make him too expensive in my opinion. Also, even at 42 million, I feel like there is better value on the market with players who are just as good as Benassir at the moment. And I'll go into this in more detail, but let's first analyze Kudio Kone. So, Kone, like Benassir, is excellent defensively, but he has a different stature and aesthetic to Benassir, being taller at 6 foot 1 and having a more composed movement style. He's younger than Benassir as well, being 20, 21 in May. But like Benassir, the Frenchman has excellent ball winning ability. Not being as rash as Benassir can be at times and instead watching for the right time to put in a strong challenge whether on or off his feet. And we can see his ball winning prowess as his FB ref report shows he ranks in the 76th percentile for pressures, the 83rd for tackles and the 96th for interceptions. But his unique attribute without doubt is his dribbling ability. In possession he has the ability to receive the ball in a congested area and use his close ball control, acceleration and physicality to glide past players in the centre of the field making him a fantastic ball carrier. And we can see this as he sits in the 99th percentile for dribbles completed, whilst also sitting in the 74th and 77th for progressive passes and progressive carries respectively. So Kone, like Benassir, is a ball winner who is also a tremendous progressor of the ball, which is exactly what United need at the base of their midfield. Now I do think that Benassir is better suited to that specific register role, as I think he has the press resistance to play with his back to goal, and he's quick into play under pressure, is a little more developed than Kone, and this is a part of the 20 year olds game he does need to improve the kick on and become a top level player. Kone has a contract at Gladbach until 2025 and was signed from Toulouse for around £8 million, so I reckon he'd cost United around the £35 million mark. The problem I have with both in regards to Manchester United is that both have really only come into this vein of form this season, and prior to this season were either in their development stage in the case of Kone, or were in and out of the team of injuries and suspensions, which was the case for Benassir. And whilst I don't think that these completely ruled him out of the picture, I think there are three better options on the market at this point in time and probably better value for money as well. Out of the players I've mentioned so far, I'd say that Kakare is the best option. However, I think the next two players I'm going to talk about are better options for Manchester United. My number one and dream choice is Aurelin Chiuamani. I've spoken about him many times on this channel and I even have a full video analysing him which will be linked in the description below. So check that out after if you are unfamiliar with him. And so I won't do a full analysis of him, but just to be brief, he ranks in 
incredibly highly for tackles and interceptions from his FB ref report. He's got the physicality and athleticism combined with his reading of the game and tackling to be a phenomenal ball winning midfielder and would do an excellent job at the base of Ten Hag's midfield. The reason I prefer him to Rice is that Chuamaini is a better passer of the ball and all in all I think with his back to goal he'll be more press resistant, able to swivel and drive out of pressure than Rice can even though Rice is a very good ball carrier but that's usually not with his back to goal under pressure but also Chuamaini would only cost around £40 million I would estimate compared to Rice who likely cost around £70 million plus so out of those two I think it's a no brainer. However I don't think United will be able to get Chuamaini as the likes of Real Madrid and Liverpool are interested in him and I think without Champions League football which at the minute definitely looks unlikely for United I don't see them being able to win that battle. So the next best option is PSV's Ibrahim Sangare. Now Sangare is another criminally underrated player and I think he's got all the attributes needed to be a top level regista and if I'm honest at some points I do think I would prefer him to Chuamaini because of his on the ball ability which I will come on to. Sangare is 24, 25 in December and is tall and powerful standing at 6 foot 3 and having the athleticism to power his way through the midfield with the ball at his feet which can be seen this season as in the era de Vizzi for PSV he's completed 3.5 tackles per 90, the second most of any central midfielder in the league and 2.6 interceptions per 90 which is also the most of any central midfielder showing how good Sangare is at breaking up the play and this is because he possesses the ability to glide across the pitch and wrap his long legs around the player and the ball to win the ball back in a similar way to how we see Declan Rice do. However in possession I think Sangare is superior to Rice and that's why I would prefer him to the Englishman as he's very good at playing incisive passes into players between the lines, always looking for a pass in behind the opposition's midfield line rather than just simply going sideways to circulate the ball and this is exactly the skill set that United need with the likes of McTominay and Fred definitely being guilty of oversimplifying things and not looking for those killer forward balls. Sangare's long passing ability from deep would be of huge value to United and I could see him making that register position his own and becoming a world class player in it because not only does he have the passing ability combined with the defensive prowess but he can also drive the ball up the pitch with the ball at his feet as seen as he's completed two dribbles per 90 this season, the second most of any central midfielder in the Eredivisie behind only Ryan Gravenberch. Overall I think Sangare has all the attributes you would want from a defensive and defensive point of view, is young enough where he can still improve significantly and be a part of Ten Hag's project for the long term and given that he was only signed by PSV from Toulouse for around £7 million I reckon United could land him for as little as £30 million which would be a bargain for a player of his quality. So to conclude this segment my number one target would be Aurelien Chouamaini who likely cost around £40 million but I do see that deal being highly unlikely especially if we're Madrid and Liverpool are serious about getting him but I wouldn't be too disappointed because I think Sangare is on his level and is only a couple of years older as well and still under 25 and would be available for a very good price. Maxan Kakare would be my third choice. I think Sangare's sheer physicality and athleticism does give him the edge over Kakare though I do think the Lyon man could be signed as well and play alongside Sangare and that may actually suit him better but I'll come on to whether he's an option for United in that more advanced midfield role in another video which I am working on as we speak so make sure you subscribe to the channel and click the bell so you don't miss out on that. So if United were to bring in Sangare they would have both him and Garner who are capable of playing at the base of Ten Hag's midfield in that register role and to be honest I think both are capable of being starting players in that role giving United fantastic quality in depth. Both players are fantastic under pressure which is something that United lack in midfield right now and both are extremely creative in those deeper positions which will allow Ten Hag's side to break the lines of play in a way in which they can't if Fred or McTominay were there. If you check out the analysis I did on Garner, you should be able to see exactly why I think he'd be perfect for this role. It will be in my Manchester United youngster playlist, which will be linked in the description below. But I think initially Sangare will be the starter, but Garner should be given at least a 30-70 split in that role within the first part of the season, giving him a fair chance to compete for the role. And then after, if both players are impressing, Ten Hag has the option of either pushing one into a more advanced central midfield spot alongside Fernando or switch into more of a double pivot with Sangare and Garner playing alongside each other with Fernandes ahead. So in the next part of this Manchester United transfer series I will be looking at the advanced central midfielder and the winger that Manchester United should sign and I'll also maybe look at a centre forward as well if Manchester United decided they needed one come the summer. But if you did enjoy the video remember to give the video a like, subscribe to the channel and click the bell for notifications and put your thoughts in the comment section below and check out some of my other videos which will be linked in the description as well.